Hello! Welcome to another free e-learning tutorial from dacanane.com. Today I'm going to take you through Mind42. Mind42 is a fantastic mind mapping tool. Mind42 has many features, but perhaps the best features for the classroom are that individual mind maps can be worked on by multiple collaborators at the same time from different machines. Individual mind maps can be linked together and they are embeddable. All of this means that for a teacher, this tool ticks some good classroom management boxes. Collaboration, sharing and feedback. Now that I've logged in, this is what my dashboard looks like. Here I can see my previous mind maps and on the gallery tab, I can search for mind maps created by other Mind42 users. Right, back to the mind maps tab and let's get on with creating a new mind map. To do this, I simply click on the new mind map button. In the new window, I give my new map a name and now this name will end up being the central feature, the starting node of the mind map. So the name should reflect the focus. It can be changed later. So here is the start of our mind map. We can see at the top of the page some navigation controls to help me find my way around my map as it grows. To the left is the toolbar that I will use to create the content of the mind map. The navigation tools will make more sense as my map grows but for the moment the zoom and center functions are really useful to know especially the center function because clicking on this will bring the starting idea node back to the center of the screen. Now I want to add content. To do this I need to click on the initial node doing so creates a plus sign on the node. Clicking on the plus sign will create a new node for my mind map and also activates the toolbar to the right. So now I have to enter some name, information, etc. into my new node. I now have the ability to start to organise the data I'm entering. Starting at the bottom of the menu bar, I can set the style for this node, I can set the font style and size and also set the colour of the node itself. Moving up the menu options, I can also add an icon to the node again to help make the layout of my information visually logical. Now that I've set the style for the node I now want to add data to it. The first thing I want to add to the node is an image. To add any contents to any node I first have to ensure that I've clicked on the node to select it. Now I can select the image option from the menu bar. A new window that pops up asks me for a URL for the image I want to include. To get a URL of an image from Google Images all I need to do is to search for an image and then from the selection click on the one image I want. Google now opens the page to reveal three buttons. I need to choose the view original image option. On the new page I then copy the URL in the address bar and this is what I paste into the Mind42 image URL request and then press enter. Now I can see that my new node has an image icon attached to it and to reveal the image all I have to do is to click on the image icon. Once the image is revealed, I can click on the icon at the top right of the image and this will put the image itself into the node to be visible all the time. To return to the text view, all I have to do is to click on the T icon on the node and the image is hidden. Working up the menu bar, the next thing I want to add is a web link to my node. I have to click on the node I wish to add the link to, then click on the link icon on the menu. I have the option of using the Wikipedia search icon, but today it's decided not to work. So, if my search term had worked, the relevant Wikipedia article would be here. Instead, I can search for the same article in another tab and simply copy the URL from that search and paste it into the regular web URL option in Mind42 to get the same result. And here you can see that result in my Mind42 node. When I press enter, another active icon appears in the node for browsers to click on to access more information. When the link icon is clicked on, a small image of the website is revealed and if I click on the image, I'm immediately taken to the link page. I have now shown you how to edit a node and add content to a single node, so now let's make more nodes. You need to see how Mind42 manages new nodes when added to the central idea. So clicking on the central node, I add a new node. See what happens? Mind42 tries to balance the nodes. You will see more in a moment. For now, let me add another tool from the menu, a to-do list. This option is great if the mind map is the product of a collaboration between several users. I can leave notes and to-dos using this tool for others to read and to act upon within a given time framework, and they too can do the same thing for me to read. So it's a really good way of making sure that work is 
um, organized and completed by different members of the team. Here I have added a discussion point for the team to consider as the mind map progresses. Once saved, all members of the team can read the note, set the priority and the percentage value given to the completion of the task. The other members of the team can reply by creating subsequent tasks that have to be completed. It just depends on the depth and the complexity of the inquiry underway. I can also add notes to a node. These are more general notes that can also be used by students to jot down their thoughts and ideas to progress their inquiry or as a way of recording what they have learned from the information contained in a specific node. The formatting options of a note are pretty limited, but notes are very useful nonetheless. Once saved, the note icon appears as with the other tools in the node. Also note, when I click on any node and the menu appears, the menu highlights in blue all of the items contained within the node as a visual cue to the content within. Just a good little reminder there really. Now I'm going to add new nodes branching out from the central idea. As I do, see how Mind42 manages these new nodes. They swap around. So if you have a set layout you want to achieve, then you'll need to plan carefully at this stage. Child nodes from a parent node are just handled as a branching tree with Mind42 automatically expanding the whole map to fit the new child nodes. Pay careful attention to which node is active as you add a new node. If you make a mistake, you can click and drag a node you've created to a different parent node if you wish to. As I add new nodes, see how Mind42 stretches itself out. And as it does, this is when the menu options at the top of the screen become useful. I can hide or reveal the branching tree structure of the nodes with the hide reveal nodes icon at the top bar here. This is especially useful if you want to simplify the view or be in control of how content is revealed if you are making a presentation. So how does a Mind42 node handle something like YouTube? Well, unlike the tools like Padlet, Dipity or EdCanvas, of which more later, Mind42 does not embed video into a node. It would be great if it did. Instead, we have to contend with getting the link from the video in question and paste the link as before. The issue here for me is that students are taken to YouTube when they click on the link and YouTube is not brought to them. A subtle difference, but in the classroom, an important one. So if YouTube and how your students use it is an issue for you, this missing feature in Mind42 could be a major stumbling block for you. It certainly adds to the classroom management issues rather than diminish them, such as tools like EdCanvas or Padlet do, by playing the resources within the service and not jumping students out of it, like Mind42 does. Now I've made my mind map, I want to share it with others to collaborate on it. To do this, I click on the drop down icon on the top grey bar by the name of my mind map. I then select on the collaboration option and add in the emails of those whom I wish to collaborate with. A note here. For this to work, each must have an individual Mind42 account. Collaboration cannot happen with a single account logged onto multiple machines. So, if individual email addresses for your students is an issue, then instantaneous collaboration via different computers will be problematic. Students can still cluster around a single screen, however, and collaborate, but one person will be typing and the others will be talking. Once I've added my addresses and my message, I simply send the message and wait for them to all to join my session for the collaboration to begin. I have had over 20 teachers at one time working on a single mind map at the same time, so the tool can handle lots of concurrent sessions well. To publish my work, I click on the publish link from the drop down, check the tick box and click on save. Once done, I can then click on the embed link in the bottom right to grab the embed code to place my map in my chosen wiki, blog, website, etc. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more e-learning tutorials. And don't forget to let your colleagues know. These tutorials are for sharing, so please share. Until my next tutorial hits your feeds, keep practicing. <laughs>